Okay, thank you all for, and thanks, thank you, the Foundation, for inviting us all to speak and present our really, really important studies, I think. We've heard wonderful projects so far. So our work is on epilepsy, and most of you know that epilepsy does affect, unfortunately, 1 to 3 percent of the population, and that is mostly children, but also the elderly. We do have a wide array of drugs available to treat epilepsy. However, there are 30 to 40 or 45 percent of patients who do not find seizure control with these drugs. And that means that they are constantly at a risk of a seizure, which can result in injury or even death. So what can we do about this? Uh, my lab has looked into energy metabolism in the, into the, in the brain for a long time, and uh, we and others have found that there is an impairment in glucose uptake in the epileptic brain, and also the epileptic brain has trouble metabolizing this glucose by the Krebs cycle, so that less energy is produced. So with less ATP produced in the brain, we're obviously short of energy to maintain neuronal membrane potentials and to maintain normal, normal signaling, and this can result in seizures. Now, what can you do about it? For a while, we have looked at alternative fuels to provide the brain in epilepsy with fuels alternative to glucose, and those were medium-chain triglycerides or ketones. Now, that is effective. However, patients have to change their diet drastically with these treatments. So now we are looking at improving glucose energy metabolism by trying to improve the entry of glucose-derived carbons into the TCA cycle or the Krebs cycle to make more energy. And this will hopefully result in an easier treatment, uh, a pill which has less side effects than our drugs that all sedate the brain. So I thank the Foundation um, heartily um, because this project would not have been able to continue without the funding. <laughs>